Happy Friday, yeah. Northeast Ohio and wherever you may be watching us from. We are on WKYC and in the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk Browns, Cavs and Guardians. We're going to discuss whether or not the win total for the Guardians is properly set. Bull. I'm Adam the Bull and from almost fired to coach of the year. We'll get into the Cavs in a little bit. Gee. And I'm G. Bush, the fifth member of Jagged Edge. And I will tell you today, <laughs> not only why Taylor Swift will be showed a lot, but Patrick Mahomes it lives in immortality now after he wins the Super Bowl. Ooh. And I'm Mikey McNuggets. The Browns have made a ton of coaching staff changes this offseason, but are they upgrades, downgrades, or are the Browns in the same spot? find out in just a few minutes yeah this is exciting because usually our WKYC show up to now has yeah. been all Brown centric yeah the Super Bowl is coming up but it's fun to now we're we're adding a little bit of all three teams we're going to talk right. Guardians we're going to talk Cavs and of course we will sneak in some Browns I want to start with the Cavaliers because the narrative the first month of the season was when does JB get fired <laughs> JB Bickerstaff famously knocked out of the first round of the playoffs last year when he had a great regular season, over 50 wins for the Cavs. Now he's actually being mentioned as one of the front runners for coach of the year. As they say, life comes at you fast. Should J.B. Bickerstaff be considered or be the front runner for coach of the year in the NBA? Well, listen, I, I'd have to say yes at this point. And I was one of those guys that was looking around saying, okay, well, JB, how many, a ticking time bomb. You know, you talk about the individuals that people say, look, hey, we're not getting what we wanted out of it. You look at Donovan Mitchell, he looks like he's upset a little bit. But now you take a look at JB, changes the way the offense rocks and rolls. They, they go one, one in, four out. They shoot a lot of threes. The pace is up. Uh, I just think he, he's done a tremendous job in, in, in changing the identity of this team. And uh, they did a lot of three big, you know, centers, seven-footers and stuff like that. Now they're going to the shooting lineups. Uh, Okoro has improved. You look at Donovan Mitchell playing like an MVP. He's playing like he, he's a guy that, that is a second-team, first-team all-NBA type guy. And the way that Evan Mobley has come back off injury and Jared Allen has played all year, I hate to say it, but uh, JB is doing a masterful job, Bull, and I think it continues throughout the uh, after the All-Star break. He certainly deserves consideration, but in the end, the Cavs, part of the reason we're saying it is because they were so bad early in the season, and that's part of this year, too. I think right now I'd have to lean towards, I don't even, I'll be honest, I don't even know his name, the coach in Minnesota. Chris because Finch. Who had them this year? I mean, they're tied for the best record in the league or in the Western Conference and they were nowhere last year. Like, I know Oklahoma City is good for the first time in a while, but people saw Oklahoma City coming with all the young guys they had put together. Minnesota feels more out of left field, whereas the Cavs were the four seed last year. So if Bickerstaff wins, great. He deserves 100% to be in the conversation, but I would go with Chris Finch in Minnesota. Yeah, is it Mark Dagnall? Is that how yeah. he says his last Correct. name? I, I think that, yeah. I, you're right, I think there was expectations in Oklahoma City. But I was reading up on this question because, I, like you, I'm like, you know, I don't even know. I haven't given that much thought this yeah. year. I did think about Finch in Minnesota. What OKC is doing is, and Mike, you'll appreciate this, they're running some concepts that you don't see all over the NBA. And he, it's kind of like it's he's the brainchild of them, or at least he's the guy that's brought it into the association. So I don't know if he's... I don't know if he's going to end up winning the award, but I just don't think I can give it to a guy who last year finished with 50 yeah, wins and yeah. was run in the first round of the playoffs. I need to see him do something he hasn't done before, and that's win in the playoffs. The coach in OKC, let's take a look at this. You lose just a couple years ago, but you lose Durant. You lose Westbrook. Oh, decimated. You lose Harden. You lose Chris Paul. You lose Paul George. You 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 lose all of these guys that that were staples of your your organization, and they kept. They always look like they were on the losing end of the stick. They get the picks and they draft picks, but you get Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. Um, you you you're able to to get you know guys like Chad Holmgren, and now all of a sudden you're in first place. And, and it's, it's like, trust the process. Yes, we lost a lot of guys, but they've done a good job drafting, and they got a lot of assets, and I, I really think they, two, they are up there, too. Sergi, two other guys real quick that deserve consideration, our old buddy Ty Lu. Yes. He's done a great job with a lot of veterans in, in L.A., and Thibodeau's done a great job with the Knicks. They've had a lot of injuries, and they're right there with the Cavs. Uh, Mike, we got to get your thoughts on this. You're the basketball mind here. Um, who's the coach of the year in your view? 
if I had to give it a one right now, I think Thibodeau's five, and I think the other four on that list all have compelling cases to be wow. number one. I would go with Finch just because, to what Bull said, Minnesota had the lowest expectations. They've kind of exceeded in their two years ahead of their own timeline. But Dagnall and OKC has revolutionized offensive basketball with how OKC's playing. They're playing with a big who weighs 183 pounds. It's unbelievable. They can't rebound, and yet they aren't getting destroyed on the glass every night. Now, is that transferable to the playoffs? We'll see. Yeah. It didn't work last year. I know, it did not. We'll <laughs> see if it happens. But uh, J.B. Bickerstaff, you know, we talked about he was on the hot seat every game earlier in the season. They he were 13-12 and 12 on December 15th. I think Since then, the they're 21-4. and four. You know, We did this with the Browns, an MVP, most valuable person. I don't think Kobe Altman has got his just due for the moves he made in the offseason. It was clear after watching them in the playoffs, they were one-dimensional and they lacked shooters. They're not anymore. No. And he, he made not massive moves, no. but he made the right moves. And I think Kobe Altman has done a tremendous job in getting this team back to where we need them and to be. And avoided the pressure from the fan base that, that wanted them to make wholesale changes. He did. He said he fixed the margins, and it's worked. Yeah, it has worked. All right, let's move it to the Cleveland Browns. It's set now. The 2024 coaching staff, a lot of turmoil for a team that went 11-6 and six and made the playoffs, particularly on the offensive side. But obviously you lose your defensive coordinator because he wants to go coach with his son. But now everybody is in place. Dickerson was the last hire as the offensive line coach. Is this coaching staff, as you look at that, better, worse, or the same they were a year ago? I, I got to say worse at the moment. And now they'll have a chance to prove me wrong. And it, first of all, we don't, we don't know. There's a lot of these guys, you know, how, how do we know how good they are? Right. But I thought the coaching staff as a whole did a tremendous job last year. And I know Alex Van Pelt didn't call plays, but he was a key guy working with Kevin Stefanski and from what we've heard since he was a very important guy in that building and the guy you replaced him with I'm not saying he won't be good he might be very good right but he did just get fired last year in the middle of the season so essentially he was to bl they were blaming him for the failures of an offense that had one of if not the best quarterback besides Patrick Mahomes in football so I, I can't there's no way I can say it's better right now it might turn out to be but right now I can't say it's better no way I, I mean I really couldn't say any of three I just think it's different I, th I think that and that's what they wanted they wanted different like you know when we came into this offseason um, the reality was donorship and, and the people in charge said hey we like what you guys did this year. We don't think it's replicatable. We don't. We thought we think you caught lightning in a bottle. And the reality is, we need an offense that is tailored to Deshaun Watson. And I think that was their number one goal. And their number one goal to do that, they went out and tried to find a guy uh, that was able to to translate that to wins and losses, and, and making sure that Deshaun plays better. And and I think in year three. I think the patience has wore a little thin with, you know, waiting until tomorrow, waiting the next week, waiting until we get it together. And now it's been three years since you've gotten Deshaun Watson. And I think ownership wants Deshaun Watson to look a lot more like C.J. Stroud, look a lot more like Josh Allen, look a lot more like Patrick Mahomes rather than a rookie or a guy that's still ramping up. And I think they, they hope that Dorsey can get him to that point. And if, he, and if they do get him to that point, it's a, it's a big, it's a big, they, they win the war, they win the war. You clap it up for them. However, the pressure is on, Jay, uh, you know, Jay, if they don't get it done. Yeah, you're exactly right. The pressure is as high as it's been in the Stefanski era. Um, I, I can't say they're better because I don't know the answer to the biggest question. Who's calling the plays? Right. Well, we've all ignored offensive line, which obviously, no matter no. how good Andy Ed Dickerson is, that's he's a not downgrade. Callahan. I mean, yeah. that that is yeah. definitively yeah, yeah, a downgrade, yeah. and it's not a knock on Andy. No, he might it's be. It's just you're replacing the best to do it. Right. So, in my view, though, the biggest question in this equation is who's calling the plays. If you're replacing the coach of the year, the two-time out of four years coach of the year play caller for the Browns with a guy that got fired midway through last season and his team got markedly better when he was gone, I don't see how you can say that this coaching staff is better. But I think it was you that said you're going to wait and see. Like, or yeah. I can't remember. Someone said yeah, we're yeah. going to wait and see. I got to wait and see. It might be better if Ken Could Dorsey turn out to be better. Yeah. ends up being a perfect fit and he's calling plays and suddenly Deshaun looks like Houston Deshaun again. 
then they're better, even with the loss yeah. on offensive line. But that's going to be a big right. loss. There's no argument on paper that they're better. I mean, that's just silly. I mean, there's no way to argue right, that. You can't but do doesn't it. mean it couldn't turn out to be. Let's right. see. We'll wait and we'll see. All right. The, the, it, next year's schedule is interesting. There is still a shot. It's a slim shot, but there's still a chance that our Cleveland Browns could actually open the season in Brazil. On a Friday night. On a Friday night <laughs> against the Philadelphia Eagles. On the plus side, if they were to do that, they would get an extra couple of days before their week two game because obviously Friday to the next Sunday would be nine days. Um, what do you guys make of that? It, it, would that be a win? Would that be something that you wouldn't want to see? The Browns going to Brazil. I've got no problem with it. I think we, some of us used to be hung up and uptight about these out-of-USA games. I think it's cool that the NFL is doing this. I think it's exciting. I think there'll be a lot of energy in that game. It's an exclusive. Like it's, it's, We've never had a Friday night game. At, it, last year they had it at uh, Thanksgiving. But this is the first time we've had it in the beginning of the season. If you look at their possibilities, I think the Browns have a pretty good chance of being that. I'm just speculating. Mike, can you bring up that list real quick again of their opponents yet if you could because I, I look at the opponents they're going to want it to be a, a decent game right I would think they would want it to be a conference game yeah but a lot of times they don't want to put the division games on the road uh, well well if you're showcasing football in right. Brazil right you want the Cowboys I right. mean, you want something that they can relate to but the league often does not put these foreign games in division games, most of the time, because they feel like since the teams are playing twice, it's you an unfair advantage. You don't want to lose advantage. that home crowd. Yeah, that's, exactly. You know what? I didn't think about that. So, you're right. I, I, if, if it's one out of six, the Browns are probably one of the best teams that the Eagles are playing on the road of their non-division teams. So I think there's a chance. You know, I, I'm, would you be against it? You I'm, guys against I'm, it, Mr. No, I wouldn't. No. I go back to the, you know, if it's, it's 25 year old G. Bush. I'm really not thinking about the game. It's in Brazil. <laughs> you what? <laughs> you might be making a road trip. <laughs> Brazil, we done. I'm like, I'm looking at my co cohorts. Like, listen, man, yeah. we, what time we got practice? Is Steve we, Becker sending us all to uh, Brazil. Oh, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> and you know that the I show mean, is backing up, and we're going yeah, to Brazil. Let's go. the, the scenery in Brazil is spectacular. What do you mean by the mountains? The, the, the scenery, the yeah, mountains, the mountains the, are great. The food, <laughs> uh, all that, man. It's just a nice look overall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if the Browns Love go down it. there, hopefully they got curfew because uh, oh boy. <laughs> they might need it. <laughs> yeah, there could be trouble found in Brazil. That's no doubt about that. All right, um, let's talk about this because it's the elephant in the room. If you're the Cleveland Browns, you're watching another Super Bowl, yeah. the 58th, where your team, which statistically has a 1-16 in 16 chance of going, has never gone. They, it somehow defies the odds of logic that they've never been there. And when you start looking out, say the next six, eight years, there's a guy named Patrick Mahomes that seems to have that AFC spot on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Are the Browns ever going to make it a soup, make it to a Super Bowl in the Patrick Mahomes era? <laughs> it's a tough one, boy. We've been yeah. talking about this for a while. It's kind of depressing. It to is. Think about. It is. You know, I, I've always said, man. You know, we talk about Operation Stockpile. What does that mean, G. Bush? You got to not only get some guys to go with what you got. You better overdo it. When you're dealing with the the level of Patrick Mahomes right now, he is on pace to become the Michael Jordan of this sport. And when, when you look at Michael Jordan, what he did, you look at the top 50 all time greatest of all time and you look how many people didn't win no rings Patrick Ewing Reggie Miller Stockton Malone Charles Barkley Dominique Wilkins never won during that era look at all the great huge big time players that were there and they didn't get nothing done except for only one reason it's Jordan I think Patrick Mahomes is a guy that he proved this year he can win a different type way he went on the road against Buffalo, went on the road against the Baltimore Ravens and still got it done. They ran the ball more this year, and we thought it was a down year for him. And all, look up, look up, lo and behold, he in the Super Bowl Here again. They are. This year made it depressing because in the past it was like, oh, they're so great. But this year it was like, nah, they're not that great. And they still got there, right? And it's not much like it wasn't just Jordan, although he was the highlighter. Like the Jordan situation, Patrick Mahomes is not only the best quarterback, they also have the best coach. Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. Well, he's got an on-field wingman, yeah. too, in Kelsey. Yeah. Certainly. Now, that's the one thing. How many more good years could Kelsey have left? I don't know. But 
You have the best coach in the league. I don't think anybody would dispute that at this point. Well, and the best on. quarterback in the league. I don't think anybody would dispute that at this point. It's going to be hard. He's the Chiefs since Patrick Mahomes became the starter are six and three in AFC Championship games and Super Bowls. I think about that. They're, most of the other teams haven't won six playoff games, period. He's six and three, and two of the three losses were to Tom Brady, who's gone. So if, yeah. it, it, playing against quarterbacks that are still active, he's six and one AFC Championship games and Super Bowl. I, I expanded the question, and I know that Mike wrote the question in the Mahomes era, but my answer to that is, I don't have much faith at all. And it's not really a knock on the Browns, although they've given us enough historically to think that they'll do something to keep themselves from going. But in the Patrick Mahomes era, you're also going to have the guy that won the MVP in the league last night. For the second time. For the second time. Yeah. And he's the same age as Mahomes. And you've got a guy who's either, I think he's a little bit younger than Mahomes in our division as well. So the gauntlet that the Browns have to get over to finally get to a Super Bowl, you can argue is as stiff as any team in the NFL because we have two MVP caliber quarterbacks in our division and in our conference, we have a guy that's widely regarded as being better than both of them. And that, and that's not including Josh Allen, Josh Allen, right. Herbert, Justin Herbert, who now has a great coach. Yep. And C.J. Stroud, who looked like the best rookie quarterback we've ever seen. So uh, I'm 58, and my mantra has been one before I die. Yes. But now I'm thinking I might have to live way past 80 because I think for the next 12 <laughs> years. The quarterback situation in the AFC is it's not tough. conducive it's tough. to the Browns. AB, there. we need six receivers, six more. <laughs> Operation Stockpile. Operation Mike Evans and T. Higgins.